last video uh, on the integumentary system, I talked about the skin and the components that are found in the skin, along with the functions. But in this video, I'm going to go into another aspect of the integumentary system, which is the hair. Now, we saw the hair in the skin and the hair follicle, but we're going to go more in depth with the structure of the hair and also um, the different aspects of the hair. Also, this channel is part of a nonprofit organization called One World, One Nation, where we strive to provide children with an extended learning platform for them to develop their passions and um, hopefully lead them into a career. And um, so it, to support our initiative, please subscribe to this channel and also check out our website, which is in the description box below if you'd like to be, become a mentor or a child for this organization. Thanks. So this is what we saw last time with some of the hair inside of the skin, specifically the dermis of the skin, and the other part is visible from the outside. The part that is buried inside the skin is called the hair follicle and is surrounded by a couple of layers, which we will go into more depth later, and the top of the hair is called the hair shaft. Also we can see that there is a circular part at the bottom of the hair. This is called the hair bulb and is where the hair begins to grow and get its nutrients. Finally, in this diagram, there is a structure protect, projecting from the hair called the oil gland or sebaceous gland, and it releases oil or sebum from um, and onto the hair so the hair can become soft. Also, just a general note, the hair is formed um, from a protein called keratin, which is very tough and is also found in the skin. And the hair that you see on the outside or the shaft is just dead keratin cells. Further, the skin used to have a protective um, and insulation function, but now the hair is pretty much useless. Now again, there are many layers associated with the hair. The innermost layer is called the medulla, and it is present in the actual hair, not just part of the layer surrounding the hair in the dermis. This layer is sometimes not even present in light-haired people. The layer surrounding the medulla is called the cortex. The cortex is where most of the pigment of the hair is found, and as you age, this region actually gets holes in it, making your hair appear gray or white. Finally, the last layer um, that is part of the actual hair that you see on the outside is called the cuticle. If you zoom in really close, this layer looks like shingles on a roof, with overlapping keratin cells. This layer allows the hair to remain separate and not stick to each other, and is mostly transparent, so the pigment of the cortex is still visible. And this um, cuticle is mostly for protection and actually compacts the inner layers. In fact, when people get split ends, what is actually happening is that the cuticle is wearing away, and so the cortex and medulla kind of frizz out. Now these three layers are what are actually um, what the actual hair on the outside or the shaft is composed of, but around the hair bulb and the hair root, there are numerous other layers around the hair. The one that wraps right around the cuticle is called the inner root sheath. This is further broken down into the cuticle inner root sheath, um, Huxley's layer, and Henley's layer. The cuticle of the inner root sheath is pretty much the cuticle. Huxley's layer gives the hair structure, and Henley's layer is the outermost layer of the inner root sheath. Next is the outer root sheath. This serves as a place for stem cells or like early hair cells to be stored before being integrated into the hair. Also in this diagram is the hair matrix at the bottom of the hair follicle and this bas basically serves to generate and produce more and new hair cells and the hair papilla gives nutrients um, that the hair needs to create more hair cells. So how does our hair grow? Well there are new cells generated from the hair bulb and this pushes the old dead cells upward elongating the hair, or making the hair longer. But the hair also goes through phases for actually shedding. The first phase um, is anagen. This is when the hair is growing and pushing the older cells up. This lasts for about two to six years and basically lengthens the hair, or makes the hair grow. The next phase is catagen. This lasts for about one to two weeks and is where the hair is getting ready to shed. It is known as the transition phase and is where the hair follicle becomes smaller and starts to move away from the dermal papillae that gives it nutrients. Next is the telogen phase or the resting phase and this goes for about three months. The purpose of this resting phase is so that while the old hair is getting ready to leave, 
and new hair is already starting to form in its place. About 10 to 15% of the hair is actually in this phase in your body right now. Finally, the hair is ready to leave, and this is the second part of the telogen phase, the exogen, where the hair that was resting slowly and gradually loosens and sheds from the skin. Then the process starts all over again with the new hair um, that began growing during the telogen phase, starts to go for two to six years, and um, then this whole phase repeats. Now the times I've discussed are for your hair on your head, like the two to six years, one to two weeks, three months, but hair in other places, such as your arm um, or legs, have different timings. The timings of all hair are different per person because these timings are basically genetic. Types of hair. So we kind of already talked about how the hair can get different coloration. So for instance, if it's lighter, it may not have a medulla at all. And if it's gray, it might have holes in the cortex. But there are actually two different kinds of melanin or pigment that are present in your hair. That determines whether you have light hair or dark color hair. Remember, melanin is also found in the skin and gives the skin pigment as well. And the hair of the two types are eumelanin and fomelanin. Eumelanin is associated with dark hair, such as black or brown, while pheomelanin um, goes with lighter hair, such as red. In addition to hair color, there is also hair shape. Whether you have straight, wavy, or curly hair is determined by the hair follicle's shape. So if you have curly hair, it indicates that your hair follicle is actually skinnier. And if you have straight hair, then that means your hair follicle is actually completely round. And if you have wavy hair, that means that your hair follicle is not too skinny and also not too round. It's kind of in between. So there are also some other important terms about hair. One of these is males getting bald, which is called male pattern baldness, and is genetically um, driven condition, meaning it depends on your family's genes. Another one is villus. Villus is actually the hair that develops during childhood and is very, very thin and covers almost most of the body, and you, but you can barely even see it. Another term that you might hear is languo, and this is the thin and soft hair on a fetal, which is basically um, a baby in the stomach, and this hair is shed before birth, um, and the languo is basically um, replaced by the villus hair, which basically covers your whole entire body, and you can barely see it. So that was it for this video. I got hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot about hair, and one thing that I found really interesting was the different sizes or shapes of your hair follicles determines the um, shape of your hair. Um, so I hope you guys learned a lot too. Um, and again, this channel is part of a nonprofit organization called One World, One Nation. And if you like learning about these different science topics, you can actually sign up to become a student um, and become part of the free classes by going to our website, which is in the description box down below. Um, and also subscribe to this channel to support our initiative and like this video. And if you have any questions or comments, then leave them in the comments below. Um, here are just a couple of citations I used for the pictures for this video. Here are a couple more citations I used for the pictures of this video. And um, thanks for watching. Bye!